Today we're going to talk about measuring viscosity in an oil. So viscosity is the measure of an oil's resistance to flow. Typically viscosity will decrease with a temperature increase and increases with a temperature decrease. So they are inversely proportional. One of the important things to know about viscosity is there are really two types of measurements. So you can have an absolute viscosity measurement and you can have a kinematic viscosity measurement. And an important distinction between those has to do with the density of the fluid. So in using absolute viscosity, you will get a result in centipoise. And typically with rotational viscometers, you will get that reading out in centipoise. More commonly in oil analysis labs, they're going to be running a kinematic viscosity. That is reported out in centistokes and is using gravity to measure the viscosity. An easy way to do a conversion between centipoise and centistokes is take the dynamic viscosity divided by the density uh, to get the kinematic viscosity. But that's an important distinction to know and making sure that you're trending using the right measurements. So there are some key factors to consider when choosing the right viscosity for your equipment. The first thing you do want to do is consult with your OEM and understand what those recommendations are. But there's some other properties we need to understand as well. So viscosity index is a key property of viscosity. It helps us understand how the fluid's ability to resist change under extreme changes in temperature. So typically the higher the viscosity index, the less change we'll see in viscosity with any changes in temperature. The second thing is the ability of the oil to resist excessive shearing. So excessive shearing, if that's occurring from shock loading or a lot, a lot of load in a certain situation, boundary lubrication conditions can occur, which is two surfaces that are excessively touching. And if this is occurring too frequently and for too long, this can create lubricant starvation and ultimately lead to a failure. So this is an important concept to know as well. And then also considering the speed, load, and temperature of the uh, lubricated equipment is very important in calculating the right viscosity recommendations. And then finally, grease versus oil and understanding when grease is appropriate and when oil is appropriate for certain situations. So typically with grease, we have low speeds and high loads that where grease is recommended. And in oil, we have higher speeds and higher temperatures, which uh, oil would be more appropriate. So how do we go about setting alarm limits for viscosity? So it's very important that we always take a reading for the, from the baseline oil, the brand new oil, before we start to trend any viscosity changes. So typically when an oil is blended, it has, a, it has a, the ability to be plus or fine, minus 5% of what that value is. So for example, like an ISO 32 oil has a range of what that viscosity could be. So it's important to understand what that is so we can benchmark where we need to be when we're trending. So typically plus or minus 5% of that baseline value, we can consider cautionary, basically just watch. And plus or minus 10%, we're gonna alarm that. So those are some good guidelines. You can uh, move those around a little bit, but those are some good places to start. So what are some reasons for viscosity changes? It's an important thing to note that reasons for viscosity changes, viscosity is typically a lagging indicator test. So things are going to happen that are going to trigger viscosity changes. So typically the most, the most common thing is incorrect viscosity grade is put in. So you'll see an increase or a decrease, whatever that might be. Secondly, contamination. So water, fuel, other solvents getting into the oil, that will cause a change in viscosity. But you might see that in other instrumentation. And then loss or shear of VI improvers can, change, can cause changes in viscosity. And finally, oxidation of the oil. So typically you'll see a, a viscosity increase when the oil starts to oxidize. So what are some common techniques for measuring viscosity? So in an oil analysis laboratory, they're typically using kinematic viscometers using a U-tube or a glass capillary tube. And that is run per, per ASTM D445. Those results are typically reported out in centistokes. And in our mini lab system, we have the mini bisque 3000 that is also reported out in centistokes and is a kinematic viscosity method per ASTM D8092. Our mini bisque 3000 is built for the field. And this laboratory technique is more designed for an oil analysis laboratory. So the glass test tubes and those sorts of things and the temperature baths, they're more appropriate for the laboratory setting. 
So in our mini VISC system, it's more appropriate for the field. There's also rheometer techniques and rotational viscometers. So just note though, if a rotational viscometer is being used, those results are gonna be typically reported out in centipoise. So just make sure that you do the proper conversions if you do indeed need those results in centistokes.